Hello, I'm Lori Steiner, sitting in for Armin Budish. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, the healthcare enrollment deadline is drawing near. We'll ensure you have the data you need to decide. Then plop and drop. No, these aren't new moves for couch potatoes, but you might want to exercise these options in retirement planning. Suffering from colds or allergies? Our advice is nothing to sneeze at. Plus, we'll meet a man with a plan to celebrate our city. And should you pay off your mortgage balance or keep the cash? It's time to get you going, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. Remember when the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, was rolling out? A big part of the plan was being able to do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison for shopping um, when you're looking for your health care coverage. Now we want to ask Greg Young, how'd you like them apples? Greg is Director of Strategic Poli Policy and Initiatives for Medical Mutual of Ohio. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So how did the apples to apples comparison go? Well, you know, that, that was a big point of the Affordable Care Act, having the health care consumer look at plans and be able to compare apples to apples. Well, it's not been that simple. <laughs> um, a, a good example is the fact that when they get on the website, and they look at those plans, it's very hard to get a sense of, you know, is your doctor, you know, consistent with that plan? Mm -hmm. What is the provider network like? So that's been an issue. Yeah, that's a big one. So uh -huh. you've got a bushel full of tips for us, huh? You know, to help I, us I, I certainly when we do. go on that website to figure out what to do. Sure. And, you know, people are uh, creatures of habit. A lot of times they like to have the same plan or something very similar to what they had before. So I think it's important that people, when they look at those metal plans, they try and find that plan that is close to what they had before, if that's what they liked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's the platinum, the gold, the silver, the bronze. Um, what is nice is the fact that the law really standardized the benefits. We have the essential health benefits. So when people pick out a plan, they're going to have the same pretty much similar benefits, but the cost will be different. And if, if people only go with cost, they're going to miss some important things again, okay. the provider network. Okay. Yeah. So when we're looking at similar plans, so there's going to be gold level plans and right. platinum level plans mm -hmm. and all of that. What else are those things that we might miss out if we're just looking at the dollar amount and the level? Right. Like I said, I think probably the most important thing is, you know, is your doctor in that plan? Is the hospital that you go to in that plan? A lot of the uh, plans have gone ahead and they've used what we'll call, um, the, the common terminology is a, a skinny or narrow network, where they reduce the number of providers in order to reduce costs. So, you know, benefits don't necessarily translate into the coverage. How far do you have to drive to get to that specialist? Ooh, yeah, that's an important factor. Sure. Um, but if you don't have access to the provider information when you're comparing those plans, how do you find that information out? You, you know, Lori, that's a great question. And I, I think that there are people who, are, who can be relatively savvy. They can get on healthcare.gov. There are links that will take them to the insurer selling the specific plan. And I've tried that myself, and it, it can be difficult. Mm -hmm. But, hey, Ask your provider, you know, are you on this plan? I'm thinking of buying a plan. Are you, you know, are you on it? Are you on the network? Mm -hmm. And also call your insurer, if, you know, uh, be a good healthcare consumer. Ask a lot of questions. Okay. So, and I'm betting with this, all this whole Affordable Care Act, there have been new insurance companies that are new to the market. Some that maybe aren't part of the exchange, but right. Medical Mutual has been around for 80 years. You chose to be a part of the exchange. Absolutely. Um, so does that mean big changes for the customers that you have or is you know, it going to kind of you trying to keep things the same? It, it's been important for us as a mutual insurance company to really represent the enrollees with the company. So it, it, what we've done is we have kept our network the same. If you were with us in 2009, you would have access to the same doctors, you know, your uh, primary care specialists, hospitals, that you would have now in 2014. I think that's very important. Yeah. That, that continuity is really Absolutely. important. Absolutely. So when comparing apples to apples, you need to get to the core of the information. 
follow Greg's appealing advice and find out the facts so you can be sure that you still have your same doctor in hospital. And for help, check out Medical Mutual's website. It's coming up next. Find out more about Medical Mutual of Ohio by visiting their website, www.medmutual.com. Next, money now or money later? But first, this gentleman felt almost everything was a matter of opinion. So he founded the American Institute of Public Opinion in 1935. Today, this organization bears his name instead, and in our opinion, is synonymous with surveys. So who is this person who popularized polling? We'll ride back with the answer when we return. My husband and I got into the car and we couldn't do it. We couldn't pick one baby over the other. Coming to Metro changed the entire pregnancy. We actually started to become happy with, with our situation. We owe a big thank you to Metro. I can't imagine our family without Sam. George Gallup pursued polling that was not paid for by any party to ensure objective opinions. Today, his organization conducts 1,000 interviews per day, 350 days per year, on topics ranging from health and well-being to politics and economics. Gallup's hunch was correct. We all have an opinion about something. Retirement is looming, so here's the big question. Should you pop? Or should you drop? Well, maybe first you should stop and listen to Jim Lineweaver. He's here to explain how these actions could affect your post-employment income. Jim is a certified financial planner with the Lineweaver Financial Group. Welcome, welcome again. Thank you. All right, plops and drops. Let's talk about plops first. Is that when somebody just plops your money out from your retirement plan to you? Yeah, it's not a Dr. Seuss novel or anything. <laughs> <but it's laughs> yeah, part, a plop is offered to public employee retirement systems people that are going to be retiring. Mm -hmm. It stands, you know, partial lump sum option payment means you can actually take money out of your pension in a lump sum to a certain amount. Uh, it will reduce the monthly pension that you're going to get, but for a lot of people it can make a lot of sense and give them a lot more freedom. Okay, well, if you take it out, so do you have to reinvest it or something? Is yeah, that what happens what is happens? if you take it personally, you'll pay taxes on it. So the best thing to do is roll that over to a self-directed IRA. And then what you can do is a lot of times, you know, if it's invested wisely, you might be able to beat the cost of living adjustment that the pension would normally oh, give okay. you. What also happens is a lot of people have to understand is that when you take either a life-only option or a joint and survivorship option under a state pension plan, a lot of times when both of you are gone, there's nothing left for mm -hmm. the kids or family. So all that money's kept by the pension. If you take the plop and take a lump sum out, invest that wisely, if something, gosh forbid, happens to both of you, yes, family will lose that pension, but they'll have that investment left over to hopefully go to kids or grandkids down the road. Yeah. So it can really work out to be a much better situation and put you in more control. It could, because you're kind of advising yourself on that one or getting help. Yes. <laughs> so the other is a plop. So what's a plop? Drop. A drop? Yes, oh. drop. We did, just yes, did, we did the plop. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it is yes, confusing. It is confusing. It yes. should be Dr. Seuss, yes. but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so how about the drop? Yeah, so this is called a drop, a deferred retirement option plan. This is available for police and fire. Okay, so what happens is a little different. This is where they technically can, like, retire from their pension, but they're still going to work for the city. Their monthly pension payment is going to go into this annuity bucket, so to speak, and part of their pay will go into that, and they have to stay there now, like, a minimum of five years, maximum eight. And then when they go to retire, it's really not going to affect their pension too much, but they'll have this lump sum that they can then roll over to a self-directed IRA if they okay. want. So different so structure. similar, but differently in how they do and it. And you've got to really be careful of the nuances and how all their structure. Okay. Their structure. So a lot of details with that too. Um, is that just an option that people can choose to do? Yeah, you're not forced into either one of these. So it's okay. good to sit either down one. with an expert, make sure they look at your financial tax, legal and insurance issues to see what's the best one for you. Because in a lot of these instances, once you make a decision, you can't turn back. So you mm -hmm. got to make sure you do it all right up front. And I'm sure people are nervous about that because they can't make a change in it it's, later on. It could be one of the biggest so decisions So they really they can get a better return, do you think, from a... Um, 
the self-invested part of everything? They can. You just want to make sure you're prudent in how you do things and diversify your level of risk. But that's why they should really see somebody like a certified financial planner or somebody that can represent multiple things for them. Okay. That's why we're putting on an education program for you know, Right. Viewers. I was going to mention that, yeah. For those of us who can't figure out the difference between a plop drop and a drop. Right, exactly. Okay. <laughs> we'll have the Dr. Seuss book ready for you. All right, good. <laughs> But yeah, it's so gonna, tell us about what that dinner is going to be. Yeah, it's actually going to be at Lock Keepers. We're holding it on March 25th in the evening, and anybody under one of the state pension plans is welcome to come. It's going to cover all the financial, tax, legal, and insurance issues that you need to face so you make a good decision for retirement. Excellent. Good information when people need it. So if you need more details, then drop by this dinner and plop yourself into a seat. For more information, give Jim a call. His number is coming up next. <laughs> For more information, call the Line Weaver Financial Group at 1 888 313 4009 or log on to www.lineweaver.net. Next, the nose knows. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. Today's the last day to tap into SAP at the Geauga Park District's Sugarbush Sugar House and Lodge. Enjoy a sweet look into Maple Sugaring's past as well as its present process. Then sip a sample. To learn more, call 440-286-9516 or tap www.geagaparkdistrict.org. What could a stuffed nose, a migraine, and a toothache have in common? Ear, nose, and throat specialist Dr. David Stepnick is here to breathe new life into our understanding of our sinuses. Dr. Stepnick is with Metro Health. Welcome. Thank you for having me. And I know this is a problem I suffer from, so I'm glad to have good information. Um, I understand how a stuffy nose could be part of you know, your sinus issues, but a migraine and toothache, where does that fit in? Well, Lori, we have four sets of sinuses. There are sinuses above the eyes, between the eyes, beneath the eyes and behind the eyes. And the sinuses in particular beneath the eyes, the bottom of the sinuses at the same uh, place where the roots of the teeth are. And so sometimes people that have an infection in the sinuses beneath the eyes will experience that as tooth pain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes though it is a problem with the teeth and so we may need an x-ray to figure out what the uh, real problem is. Which is really going on there. What's so. really going on. The second thing that can happen is that there are certain patients that have migraine headaches that have triggers in the nose or in the sinuses. So that people that have sinus problems can trigger migraines. So oh. they're, they're interrelated. They're all interrel it's all in your head I guess, right? It's all in your head. <laughs> but not really. But are some people more sensitive to sinus issues than others are? You know, there are some people that have never had a sinus infection, like me. Oh, um, yeah, you're lucky. I get them a lot. <laughs> and there are other people that have them very frequently. And there are two things that really can predispose somebody to a sinus infection. One is the anatomy or the structure inside the nose or the sinuses. And the second thing is that some people have swelling of the membranes more so than other people that can end up blocking the sinuses as well. And these can be addressed as far as uh, uh, treatment, either with medications or sometimes surgery. Okay, so um, surgery to, just to open up the, the passages? Uh, it is. Actually, sinus surgery in 2014 really does just that. It takes the small openings to the sinuses that can get blocked, and it opens those up so that it's less likely that they're blocked. That's totally different than what we did 25 years ago where, for want of a better term, we ripped the linings of the sinuses out. So it was a very different procedure. And, Sounds um, a lot safer today. <laughs> it's, it's much safer and uh, better today. All right, so I, m most of us have had colds over this nasty winter that we've had. Now, does a cold automatically mean it turns into sinusitis? Uh, no, it does not. And sometimes when we have a cold, which is really usually a viral thing, mm -hmm. that most of the times it does not become a sinusitis. Um, however, that a cold can turn into a sinus, sinus infection. So particularly if somebody has something that's lingering for beyond, say, 10 days or so, that could mean that a cold has become a sinus infection. Okay. So, so if you got all that mu mucusy stuff, does that automatically mean an infection too? Um, no, not necessarily. Sick mucus is really something that could so be... So sick mucus? Sick mucus is that stuff that we all think of as mucus. It's that green stuff, the yellow mm. stuff, the thick stuff. Um, we all have mucus, and, and healthy mucus is actually important. 
Okay, so what's healthy? What's that look like and what does that do? Healthy mucus is important, meaning that without it, that um, our sinuses and our whole respiratory system wouldn't function properly. It's mm. part of the immune system. You can think of it best if you sort of take your tongue and wipe the inside of your cheek. That lubrication mm -hmm. is actually healthy mucus. It's not saliva. Uh -huh. um, and that same stuff is within the nose and in the sinus cavities. And again, without that lubricant working, the sinuses and the immune system wouldn't work well. Oh, okay. So what if we do get sinusitis? I mean, cur curl up in a blanket with a good book and drink chicken soup and plenty of fluids and wait for it to go away? Is that what we have to do? That is important. Uh, we know that things that you know, grandma may have told us about mm -hmm. are actually good um, and the rest in the fluids and whatnot are important but if we truly have a sinus infection that often needs to be treated with an antibiotic and without, without the antibiotic it can actually last longer or even progress into complications. Okay. And the one thing we really can't forget is hand washing. Um, if there's somebody at home that has a sinus infection or even any kind of infection and they're coughing or and getting bacteria on their hands and then sitting down on the laptop or something like that, that's how these things are often transmitted. So hand washing is very, very important. Everybody wash their hands. Okay. <laughs> All right, a kiss may just be a kiss, and a sigh may just be a sigh, but as time goes by, thanks to Dr. Stepnik, you now realize a cold or a migraine or a toothache may not just be what they seem. To find out if these symptoms signify sinus issues, see a physician. My thanks to Dr. Stepnik for letting us be nosy about our sinuses. Thank you. Find out more by calling MetroHealth at 216-778-7800 or log on to www.metrohealth.org. Next, he has something nice to say. It's time to get up and go, an exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, I'm Mike Carvin from Breakout Fitness and today we're going to do a towel stretch to stretch the triceps in the back of the arm. This is a great stretch that can be done either before or after physical activity to either warm up or to help you cool down. We're going to start with the towel in our right hand. We're simply going to drape it behind our back and we're going to reach behind us with the opposite hand and we're going to pull down gently on that towel to stretch our right arm. You'll feel a nice stretch, hold it for a 5 to 10 count. And then let's go ahead and switch sides now. We got the towel in our left hand, do the same thing. Right around the back, come up from the bottom and give it a gentle pull. Remember, you should get a gentle stretch. You don't want to tug or pull on anything, okay? Remember, deep breathing also helps. How you feeling? I'm ready to throw that in the towel. All right, and now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, please send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 23240 Chagrin Boulevard, Suite 450, Beachwood, Ohio, 44122. For years, Cleveland has been a punchline to many not-so-nice jokes. But for those of us who live and work here, we know that the city has so many positive points. Now, George Witherspoon is encouraging us all to become boosters of our hometown by wearing a button. George is the founder of Witherspoon Enterprises, and he's a one-man marketing campaign for Cleveland. So Thank we're you. really happy to have you here. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get to the, we're talking about the button, but, you know, why are you so sold on Cleveland? Well, Laurie, I grew up in Cleveland, and it's just been such a wonderful experience for me. Grew up here. I lived in Detroit, Michigan for quite a while. I also lived in New York City. I joined the Army, and I traveled okay, all it. over the world. This is you in the Army, Yeah, right? I was also in the Air Force, and I traveled over the world with the Air Force. And in all of those cities, everywhere I've been, there is no place, not any place, that's better than Cleveland. And that's why I developed on my button, Say Nice Things About Cleveland. Okay, you got your button on your lapel yes, there. Yes, I do. So and I want to see those on everybody. That's so. right. Yeah, we <laughs> sure do. It's kind of developed to let people stop and think because we have got just so many wonderful things that are going we on do. here. We got entertainment. We've got some of the best entertainment. We've got some of the best sports teams anywhere, and just so many I other things. I wish that they would realize it and live up to their potential. But so. well, when they wear this button, it gives but them a chance. That'll do it. All right. <laughs> then that's what we need it. to do. Yeah. So we've got, like you said, so much to brag about in the, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Playhouse Square, and it, but it was always not. It, it wasn't always quite like that. So what are some of your 
memories growing up and what it was like? Well, some of my memories are uh, Christmas at Higby's okay, to get getting a, a chance with my sisters to, yes. see, to see Santa, and that was like in early years. Uh, just a wonderful downtown. Uh, the record rendezvous on Third and Prospect, and of course, you know that's where the uh, kind of like the rock and roll Hall oh. of Fame, kind of like the rock and roll pitch began the for started? Cleveland. Yeah, All right. listening to radio station WJW with Alan Freed, who was the Moon Dog. Then it was Jackie John Slade on WJMO, and just so many other things. And you graduated in Cleveland, yes, right? Yes, I did. So this I is was your graduating in, class. Yeah. That's exciting. First, first graduating class from Max Hayes back in 1960. I uh, My first job was working at Central Market over Ontario uh, Street, and that's where the Q Arena now stands. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So you saw it when it was the old way, and now I, what it's I, built up so to. so many things. Yeah, my first uh, high school was Brownell Junior High, and that was the original home of Cuyahoga Community College. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah, the paper boy carried the Cleveland Press around on 28th and Woodland, and now that's the home of the Metro Campus for Cuyahoga Community right. College. Yeah. I did so many wonderful things working uh, for Cleveland Clinic back in the early 50s when they only had two buildings. <laughs> yeah, look at them now. Yeah. You know, had a wonderful chance through uh, Councilwoman Jean Merrill Capers to uh, have a summer job at, Ky at the uh, county where I worked uh, down in the flats and at that time no entertainment in the flats. The flats was totally industrial, just, just mm. cement and brick and mortar and steel. But and just, you've got even more. You're, yes. gonna go, you're at Cleveland Hopkins Airport, right? Oh yeah, I'm at as Hopkins a, Airport after 10 years. I've been an ambassador, Gold Coat ambassador there for the last 10 years. And you're going to be giving buttons out there? My dream is to give those buttons out to all our departing passengers and then wherever they go to the different cities throughout the United States, they can show that button and then put it on Facebook. And then if they go overseas to Madrid, to Moscow, to anywhere they go, uh, taking pictures and sending them back to Facebook, letting them just the, the, the reach that Cleveland has. It's an, truly an international city. It really is. And yeah. we just have to get everybody else to understand That's that, right? right. The, button will do <laughs> the that. buttons are going to do that too. All right. So as George points out, there are many reasons to say nice things about Cleveland. And I've got one more. George himself, he's something nice about our city, too. To help Jed, uh, George spread the word about our wonderful hometown, use the information that's coming up next. Thank you. Want to share some nice news about Cleveland? Call George Witherspoon at 216-849-0800 or email him at g-n-o-o-p-s at m-s-n dot com. Next... Should you pay off your mortgage? Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24 hour staff and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. Did you miss a phone number or website? Then here's your second chance because we're going to list all of that information again. Then we'll be back to tell you if paying off your mortgage really pays off. If you're still paying off a home mortgage, should you write a big check and pay off the balance? Many older folks feel more comfortable knowing they don't have any large debt hanging over them, especially during retirement. 
but what is the wisest financial move? Here to loan you some valuable tips to help you make the best decision for you is my law partner, Mike Solomon. Hi, Lori. Hello, Mike. So what's the benefit of paying your mortgage off early? Well, one of them might be, a, it's not an economic benefit, it's, it's almost a sleep fact. If you pay it off, you're done, you don't have to worry about making payments, and if the uh, world doesn't turn out the way you want, you don't have that obligation. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, near the end of your mortgage, most of your payments are principal, you still are paying some interest, so you're getting rid of those interest payments. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a benefit. It's a little bit off the yes, end. That's right. So do you think we're better off paying off the mortgage? Well, sometimes yes, but the problem with paying off the mortgage, you're taking a lump sum of money, you're paying off the debt, and there may come a time when you need some money. Maybe uh, you have a big medical expense or some other expense, or maybe a child's lost a job and you have to you know, help pay the, uh, you know, for their expenses, and all of a sudden you don't have the flexibility because you don't have the cash. You used it up. Mm. So that's one good reason to keep some cash, right. cash flow going. Um, but if you need cash, if you did pay it off, can't you just then go back and refinance it and get some more back out of it? Well, that's another reason maybe you don't want to pay it off, because if you pay off the, of the note and then you need to refinance, which, you, first of all, you may not be able to refinance. Secondly, there are costs many times. The banks will charge various fees, appraisals, et cetera, that you might need to, to refinance, so you're adding that. Mm -hmm. Next, many people think interest rates are going to start going up. So if your interest rates go up, when you reborrow, you're going to pay a higher rate of interest. And, and also, when you get a line of credit a sec, you know, uh, on your house, those rates tend to be higher than your oh, than the first mortgage. The, the first is? mortgage yes. So you're not actually getting a first mortgage if you're not buying your house. You're taking out a home equity Right, and line. lines of credit tend to be a little bit more expensive. Okay. Way. So any other reasons not to pay off the mortgage, you know, not to jump on that chance? One's a little bit more complicated, but if you're paying off a mortgage, let's say, over a period of years, then the present value of your payments to the future is less. Let me explain that in English. Okay. <laughs> so let's say you have 15 years of payments of $500 a month. In, in, if inflation is, let's say, 2%, by the time you're making those last payments, in today's dollars, you're only really making a $400 payment because you're, you've got a fixed fee for 15 years. Oh, okay. So it saves you some money in the long run if you keep it and just make those payments over time. So it's just a decision you got to kind of weigh out between yeah. your finances and how comfortable you are doing it or not doing it. That's huh? right. Not one size fits all. You have to sit down and analyze it. Okay. Well, that's good information. Okay. So should you pay off your mortgage balance now in one lump sum? Well, there's not one answer that applies to everybody. You should consider the costs and the benefits and make a decision that best fits you. My thanks to Mike will be in his debt for his great tips. <laughs> Call Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.butishandsolomon.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But can you prevent cancer? We're curious to find out. We'll hand off handy tips for cutting down costs on some home repairs. Until we bring you, do we come back next week with that great information? Please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates.